Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about the dynamic access list. Yes, it's yet another access list, but it's a pretty simple one to grasp. And the good part is you really don't have to concern yourself with all of the configuration details at this point in your studies for dynamic access lists. So we're going to go ahead and cover all the concepts and theories so you know how it works and what the purpose is, and then we'll move on. Okay? So this is sometimes known as a lock and key access list. And the real benefit of using a dynamic access list is that it enables automatic updates to happen to access lists, which can be a pretty convenient feature to have. And here's how a dynamic access list actually works. So we have this router, and on one interface is our web server, and on the other we're connected to our local area network. And we have a pretty simple access list configured. It's, a, it's an extended access list applied to FA00, and it's going to inspect inbound traffic from the local area network. And it basically allows anybody to access the web server on port 80, which is TCP, so it's going to be HTTP traffic. And then we're going to deny everything else. Now, what if our user on the laptop is responsible for administering the web server? So they need to access it. In fact, they need to SSH to it maybe once or twice a day in order to make changes or address problems. Well, that would mean with our current access list, we would have to go ahead and make a change. Doesn't sound like a big deal. But what if our user, since they're on a laptop, they're mobile? So for one minute, they could have this IP address, and say two hours later, they could be home with a different IP address, or they could even be somewhere else on the network within the organization and have yet a different I address as well. So how do we accommodate this? How do we allow them to do their job, but we don't want to be stuck updating the access list all day long whenever they need to get in? Well, this is where the dynamic access list comes into play. So how it works is, before this user tries to SSH into the web server, they have to be authenticated. So what they'll do is they'll first telnet into the router because we can use the router in order to authenticate them. Just like you or I would telnet to a router, enter a username and password, well our user here would do the same thing. Now if they're successful, if they're properly authenticated, then the router will automatically update our access list for us. So we would go from these two lines to something like this. You can see we have a new line. It's placed at the beginning of the access list. And here is permitting TCP traffic from our host on the laptop to the web server on port 22, which is, at, which is SSH. Now, this addition to the access list is not permanent. In fact, it's, it's, it'll expire after a configured period of time. So each time the user wants to gain access, let's say three hours later, they'll have to repeat this process again. But the benefit to us is, once we configure the router to support the dynamic access list, we're done. We don't have to keep updating it each time because the router will do it for us now. And that's pretty much all there is to a dynamic access list. Okay, and so let's summarize what we covered. With the dynamic access list, we get the benefit of automatic updates to the access list. And that can be very useful in certain scenarios. In order for it to work, a user must be authenticated, and we can utilize the router to do that. So a user telnets to the router, and if they're authenticated properly, then the access list is updated automatically, and the router knows which statements to add according to our configurations on the router. And these statements are only good for a period of time. Okay? And so that's it. That is the dynamic access list. Thanks for watching.